Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to another edition of Transformation Greatness along with the Small Business Network Podcast. This is your host here, Sean White, founder and creator of Transformation Greatness, also partner and CEO of the Small Business Network Podcast, in which that we are continuing the series for the month of October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And for all of my um, past current and previous guests. It has been an honor and a privilege as far as just be learning from you and sharing some of your stories and the resources and just different things in which that you're providing as far as in your respective uh, communities and areas. So for that, I truly say thank you. But with no further ado, guys, we're going to continue as far as with this series with someone in which has been in this entrepreneurial space Around the same amount of time that I have, she has been doing amazing and incredible things. You want to talk about the art of bounce back, the art of resilience. She is someone that I tell you guys is truly an inspiration. And just the work in which that she's doing, she has her own uh, Facebook group. She's definitely accessible on all social media handles. And this will be a joy to have on a special guest on the show. But while you're all waiting for the star of the show, do me a favor, if you will. If you're catching this on the live right now, meaning that you're watching this live stream, do me a favor and type in the comments um, live. Let me know exactly on where you're tuning in from. And don't be a stranger, guys. If you know me, I love dialogue. I love interaction. I love engagement. It's just one of my true passions. And of course, if you're catching this on the replay, put in hashtag replay and let us know exactly where you're tuning in from and if this has gotten any value. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like the star of the show, she was ready to go ahead and blast off. So let's not go ahead and waste time here. We appreciate each and every single one of you that's tuning in to this special edition of Transformation along with the Small Business Network podcast. We are doing the Domestic Violence Awareness um, Month series, and which has been an absolute joy. I know as far as for uh, the month of November, I'm planning on doing a theme very, very differently, but we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here for um, the month of October. So with no further ado, we have the star of the show, and it looks like that she is sideways. So can you adjust your camera so that way, yeah, there you go. So that way we have it correctly. Okay. There we go. That is okay. Up. Let's go. Well, let's see. Here. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. There okay. you go. So, <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, as I was mentioning, with no further ado, we have to start the show. As I mentioned, she is someone that's been in this entrepreneurial space just as long as I have. Um, she's doing amazing work in terms of the professional uh, development space. I believe that she's a Ricky master, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, just, I can sit here probably for two days and just give you a whole bio as far as on her, but I'm not going to steal the spotlight. That's why she's here, right? So no, with no further ado, we have here the one and the only Miss Pam, Bam Phillips in the house. Welcome. Actually, I'm a Reiki practitioner. I haven't been uh, obtuned by a Reiki master. I don't become master until I get a professional. So I just want to make that distinction. Ah, perfect. I, I, I apologize. A Reiki no practitioner. Gotcha. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So we have here Dr. James, my partner in the house. Welcome, welcome, Dr. James. If you can do me a favor, my friend, if you can go ahead and share this out and just let others know that we are officially live, my friend. And uh, let's go ahead and get the party started. So I know you, you know, very well. You know, we've been a part of a lot of different communities. We've done business before in the past. But the listening audience that's new, they may not be familiar with you. So if you can just Promptly just give a, a formal introduction of who you are, and then we'll get this rock and rolling. I am Pam Phillips. I got the nickname of Pam Bam um, after joining a network marketing group in 2020 when everything shut down and doing health and wellness. And it aligned with me because it was all natural products and plant based, where I joined a 100 day challenge where I ran 10 miles a day. 
And during that challenge, I got that nickname by my coach and mentor at the time. He called me Pam Bam and I tried to get rid of it, but it just kind of caught on. So rather than fight it, I'm just going to embrace it. So created my email and all my social media platforms around it. But also, so correct me if I'm wrong though, but then I call you Pam Bam as well. Yes. Yeah, and it just stuck with me. Pam, Pam, I like it. Pam, Bam. it got a nice thunder to yeah, it, right? One of my partners, uh, her name was Selena. She called me, she said, Pam, Bam, she gets things done. <laughs> and okay, now you say it that way, it kind of sounds pretty catchy. So I just kind of embraced it and I just kind of ran with it with all my social. I changed, in fact, I changed all my social platforms to represent Pam Bam. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump into this because you mentioned to me that you had a unique story since that we're talking about domestic violence awareness series. So um, would you like to elaborate on that? Uh, well, let me, let me just start with my story. Sure. Uh, I got, I, I would come from a long line of abuse. My father was abusive. He was my first abuser. I pretty much was raised from preschool till the age of 12 in the foster care system split up from my two brothers and um so to escape it i thought the best thing for me to do is run away get married at 16 and everything was really good in the beginning until the babies started coming and then i had my first one at 18 and then it started getting a little controlling and then it was either controlling what i said what i wore where I went, and then it was, then it escalated to eventually, you know, he was hitting me and stuff like that, and I felt trapped. I didn't know where to go because I did not have a support group. My mom was kind of dealing with some stuff, what my dad had done to her that I didn't know, and so I was in total denial and thought, well, I could fix this, and I justified it. You know, well, I'm going to stay in this relationship because I have kids. Right. I'm telling you, don't do that because you are not protecting them. You're actually causing them psychological harm. Mm -hmm. uh, and it took me a long time. It took me 10 years to finally build up the courage because for me, it was normal. I had an abusive childhood. I had no other role models to prove me different. And so to me, it was normal. It was an Oprah Winfrey uh, episode um, that kind of she was interviewing a lady such as myself with a similar background story and was talking about abdomen and I'm like this isn't normal people don't do this your spouse don't put their hands on you they don't control and manipulate and then I started um, going to the library and doing some self-help books and just kind of but I was still terrified it took me 10 years to get out of that wow then I eventually migrated into meditations and kind of getting a little bit more deeper into the healing because I had to address the root cause of when it first started. And in 2020, that's when it started. Interesting. You, you, you mentioned something uh, as you were sharing your story. And thank you for that, by the way. Uh, for all those that's just um, tuning in, welcome here once again to Transformation Greatness, along with the Small Business Network podcast. I am interviewing here Ms. Pam Van Phillips, and we're talking about domestic violence awareness. But you touched on something very interesting. I've been finding a theme here recently when I've been interviewing a lot of guests in terms of domestic violence awareness, especially, that there is a common thread to that, that it normally starts really from childhood right? And as far as with your experience, and it's kind of interesting because I guess as we get older, it's one of those things in which that we start attracting that type of uh, situations and circumstances. But obviously, you know, when you're young like that, you don't know what, what, what's going on, why this is happening. You just feel like it's a black cloud. Very intriguing. I guess I'm, I'm curious. So you mentioned that you started meditation what was it about meditation that really that you said you know what i believe that this can work this can help me well with my daughter my daughter had um well my stepdaughter but i call her my bonus daughter she was still my daughter That's right. uh, got diagnosed with cancer at seven and oh, wow. we went to hospitals and the protocols and stuff like that and it was till 
10 when she finally, we thought she was cured. Then at 17, she got re-diagnosed with a second cancer. We couldn't use the same stuff, so we went into more. Uh, we hired a chef. We had her come in and teach us how to do a plant-based diet. So, you know, hence that's why I was in the plant-based network marketing group. It kind of and makes sense doing um, energy healing on her acupuncture and kind of get it got into the you know some meditation and I was like hmm. like kind of piqued my interest there but I still didn't didn't click I still was have that little self-doubt I, I don't know what it was something that just limited belief that stopped me from even right. trying it watched it work on her I watched it work on her for you know till she was um, eventually paralyzed from because it spread mm -hmm. to her lungs um, so I started after she had passed and then in 2020 I thought you know what I'm going to try it and for me when I first tried it it was difficult it was so hard I was like quiet your mind quiet your mind I can do this and I look at the clock and it was like barely a mm -hmm. second but it but I eventually got to where I can do 20 minutes at a time and I could just sit and really just focus in on um, just my breathing, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And it just kind of, but then I wanted deeper then. So then I found a spiritual, uh, uh, coach that kind of helped me doing 2020. So she put me on a deeper path where I could do uh, business and do the spirituality without it being too hocus pocus. So she had a way of teaching that. But I also aligned with another domestic survivor named Angelina Costantino. Mm -hmm. oh. I know her too. She is my sister. She is my rock. She started it. So I found her first. And then I found Anya Hal Halimia. And right now she's in Peru. She's doing a, a really deep meditation right now. So she can't be bothered for the next two months. So I'm so, so proud of her to go down that journey. But those are the two ladies that really put me on the path of the spiritual awakening and the, and the awareness of, oh, I can go a little bit deeper for, not it, not everyone wants to go that deep, but for me, that's what worked. And so I built my whole coaching business around that. And I'm primarily on TikTok with that, of kind of going to share my journey. Let's, 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 let's have a conversation. Let's go a little bit deeper into that as far as with med meditation and breath work, because, as someone that's a coach and also a um, hypnosis practitioner, I've had the opportunity, especially being in class in class when I was in school with HMI Institute, shout out to HMI Institute, by the way, um, I had an opportunity really to expand my um, horizons, right? I was always an individual that I'm a deep thinker and I look at things from different perspectives. Some people consider me weird, whatever, but what I'm trying to get at is that when I was in class, I met, met a lot of a lot of classmates, a lot of colleagues that was into Reiki, like um, mindfulness, right, meditation, um, <laughs> cognitive behavior, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I really started seeing the power, right, of breath work and meditation. And I realized that it wasn't some hocus pocus, right? It wasn't some hokey pokey. It's actually um, backed by science as well. I know Dr. James will love that because he he knows about that as well. We have conversations about that. But I, I guess what would you say um, to someone, right, that may have a history of domestic violence or even know someone that's been a part of that, and yet they want to introduce meditation or breath work, and they're saying, mm, you know what, no, I ain't with all that. That's kind of hocus pocus. That's kind of kind of cloud in the sky, right, type of thing. I'm a realistic person, right? I'm, mm -mm. Or better yet, um, I'm a spiritual person, right, or a religious person. Mm, that goes against what I believe. What is your take on that? Well, I kind of have thoughts like that, too. But for someone that doesn't know anything about meditation, they first I got to make sure they're in a safe space. So if they're still in that relationship, they need to get out. They need to find a support okay. group and they can and I can point them in the right direction because they should not sit in that position, especially if they got children. Not do it. If you're not going to do it for you, do it for your children. Get them out of that situation because you're doing them harm by letting them see that kind of relationship, you know, because they're going to start thinking that's protocol of how a relationship works. Right. 
and then they um uh, that mine was a gradual i didn't like jump right into the spiritual stuff because because like, you, you're right it kind of like like wait does, does my church thing okay um i it was kind of hard it was that struggle but it's a mindset shift and then it's a lifestyle shift as well mm. it's not oh i'm gonna meditate today and then one and done and life is good it's a continuous thing and every time you do it it just builds upon itself and so you get a little bit more um and more messages more enlightenment or more um power first you have to tell yourself that yes i acknowledge the pain you cannot heal the pain if you don't feel it if you don't feel it and address the emotion and the root cause of it it's just going to keep on manifesting in different scenarios with through different people, different relationships, whether it's business or personal relationships. It, and that's what I was starting to experience for a while. And I was like, <laughs> but I was bringing it to myself because that was the energy I was bringing. Okay. And once I really, it, it's not a religious thing. It's, it's really just keeps me more grounded to my true identity of who I am. So I, I don't feel, like, so, but I still struggle with this. Um, I, I know I'm worthy, but I still struggle with uh, limited beliefs and things like that. But that's why I stay meditating because I bring myself back into the whenever I feel myself going in that negative field. I would recommend if someone that doesn't know anything about it is to start with the, just your basic meditation. Because if you're not familiar, with it it's gonna because it for like i told you when i started meditating just trying to be quiet for even a five minute span was it felt more like five hours it was hard it's it's definitely something decision i'm going to do this for me i'm going to heal i am no longer going to attract these type of relationships i'm going to put me first that's why i'm by myself and single i just don't want to attract a another relationship if they can't value me wow that was powerful and to make them feel better about themselves i they either take me as i am or i would just be fine being by myself because i believe my special person is out there but only when i become that same person what i seek i have to become otherwise i can't i will never find that true person to be with interesting you know what you, you said a lot of great stuff there and i would have, have to agree and that's something that i even learned as being an entrepreneur because one i said this before and i'll say it again and that when you become an entrepreneur it really what it does it shows you on who you truly are like your mental resolve right if you're very resourceful if you are persistent, if you are relentless, right? It also shows too on your willingness to serve. Are you all about yourself or you're about finding ways to serve others, right? So it's very amazing how the way the law of vibration and the law of attraction goes hand in hand, along with obviously, you know, everything else, you know, learn the correct skills and different things of that nature. So that's very powerful. So with that, that being said, let's go ahead and kind of shift a little bit because I know as far as you're definitely deep in the health and wellness and personal development space. So tell us more about, because I know that you have a Facebook group called Inner um, Transformation. And maybe as far as you can touch more basis with that, right, as far as on what you're currently doing. And I think you mentioned that she's going to provide us with a guided meditation. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? You know I love guided meditations. Is that right? I can do guided medicine meditations in that group. Yes, can, yes, yes. Can you do, I, can, can you do one for for us live here? <laughs> I love. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Continue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just love guided meditation. So go ahead. I'm sorry. That, that is fine. I primarily do my guided meditations in my groups because um not everyone understands it. It seems kind of foreign and, and uh, weird to others, unless you're actively searching, searching that out. It just looks weird and people raise an eyebrow. They, so I'm very particular about who I share my energy with. So I want to make sure I'm with the right people and it's a safe space for all people when they come in That's because right. of all different backgrounds and all kinds of 
different levels of abuse and, and or uh, experience. So, but I primarily will do my meditate. I will do some guided meditations. Yeah, thank you for the fish. I will do that on Facebook, but I'm also on TikTok too, where I do a lot of my um, metaphysical, spiritual, a little more deeper type messages that I put out. You know what too? Yeah, I know I was trying to, you know, get you us like a, a, a treat, right? But no, but on a serious note, I do understand the power of that, especially too when it comes to really sharing your, your, your energy because that's something that is very sacred. I, I can tell you, especially when I'm, you know, connecting with clients and different things that, of that nature, especially doing like a guided meditation or even doing like a, a, a session, right? Because like I said, I'm, I'm a hypnosis practitioner. There is a certain energy that, that's required. And if the person is not really willing and not on the same page, meaning that's open, that would like to um, do the session and really be open, then it becomes very, very difficult. So I do understand that, number one. And secondly, you know, how the way this world is, it's a very crazy world. So you got to be selective in a sense because there's so many different types of energies, negative energies at that. And so I know for um, those that are, what is that word? Um, they're very sensitive. I can't think of the name. Um, oh, what are they called? They are, um, uh, I forgot it already. I just said it and I totally forgot it. But anyway, those that's very sensitive as far as um, empaths. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was trying to think of. Empaths. So, I'm, an, I'm an empath. Right. So I and uh, another group. It's not my group. It's another group I'm in. And I was like, why am I just, I just feel, I just like, I feel like a human lie detector. I can detect if it's good energy or bad energy or something bad about that aura of that person. And then when I started doing the training on Reiki, I realized you have to be careful. Because if I have bad energy and then I try to heal someone, then I transfer my bad energy to their. Correct. Correct. I, I cannot just let everyone in my circle. I have to let the ones that are give me permission because I can't perform Reiki on anyone. I have to be invited or allowed to, and, and essentially I'm not doing it. It's that person has given themselves permission. And then I just do um, specific maneuvers wherever that uh, their energy is at, meaning healing. Question for you, and it just came to mind too. So for a person, right, because of the fact you're an empath and you and you hit it right up on you a thousand percent, the person has to give you permission, right, in order to do so. That's a thousand percent correct. But for a person, say for instance, um, that's definitely had a history of domestic violence, right? And obviously you can feel it, you can sense it. There's a spirit of like of loneliness, of depression, of confusion, anxiety, and yet they invite you and they say, yes, you know what? I really want to do this because I need healing. And they're crying out for help in a sense, spiritually, we're talking about spiritually. Like, how was that experience? I guess, I don't, I don't know if you're allowed to share it or not, but how has that experience been like where, have you had a person which you um, done a session with, right? And you just felt that energy and you felt it and you're like, yeah. Despair. You can just definitely feel it. And it, um, I've been working more on uh, distant healing, and I have to really prepare my space um, and then really tune into just them and get a sense of their energy. But I have to have the permission, and they have to let their let me in so that I can. And it's not like I just go straight to a, a certain chakra healing, and so. It, I just don't pick. I allow my energy to find the energy in them that needs the healing, because it, when we block our chakras, we we're not living our authentic full life, and so and we're we're just start so like if we're not speaking the truth, then we might have sore throats. Mm. And we're not our expression. This is how we express ourselves. You know, whether we we're singing, whether we're speaking, we have to be authentic, and when we're not. We may have loss of voice. We may have sore throats and stuff like that. And our third eye, that's our inner knowing. 
and that's blocked. You know, a lot of the foods we eat actually will block a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I study a lot of Joe Dispenza science back, and I wanted to, I wanted to start a study guys, uh, gentlemen or women that are doing meditation at the level that I'm doing it um, from a scientific level so that it didn't seem too far-fetched for the person that is seeking some type of healing. Because some people like a man's voice, some like a female's voice, and not everybody's going to be gravitating towards I me. Mean, they might want someone like Joe Dispenza, you know, and that's perfectly fine because he goes way deeper than I do. Yes, he do. Hey, I follow Joe Dispenza. Man, he's a very, he's a very, he's very deep. And oh, and also too, by the way, I think I can say this on the air without getting flagged for it. He's actually a graduate from HMI Institute. Yeah. Is he? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So he's part of. So, so he's part of the HMI uh, uh, alumni. But yeah, he's very deep, and he bases it with science. And I, 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 I tell you, I think that um, for guided meditations too, um, Pam Bam, and I'm pretty sure that you can attest to this. For those that may be religious or whatever the case, is it fair to say that it's a form of prayer as well? Yeah, I would say that. Mm. I've never heard of that. Because when we are speaking, we are basically casting some sort of a spell to you manifest. Because the first thing I can't do that, then you're not going to be able to do whatever that follows the can. If you say, I can, I can heal, I can do this then you eventually, it's not going to be an easy battle, depending on how deep-rooted the trauma is. For me, mine started at five, and it took me a long time. What I had to do is find the emotion of that and then release the emotion, and then the emotion no longer had control. Mm -hmm. That's what people need to get to, is addressing that root cause of where it first started and why it still hurts, and then sit with it for a little bit and then give it back to the universe and say it is done and and then you go to the next so it's like an onion you got to go layer by layer you can't do all of it and just do like this little jump on the universe because that's not how it works and that doesn't give you time to integrate it into you because you're going to have to become a different person as you feel each part but of you doesn't that take a lot of courage as well? Because I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here, right? So doesn't it take a lot of courage? Because that means that basically means that I have to lower my pride and my ego. And because I'm wounded and hurting, you know, I want to hold on to that even though we're hurt. So you're saying that eventually I'm going to have to let it go in order to heal? I mean, that sounds easier said than done, though, um, Pam. Like, I don't know. You're correct. You're correct. For me, it was a big ego. <laughs> I had to deflate my ego because I thought, oh, people are going to judge me. People are going to like think I'm just weird because I'm a meditation guru. But you got to let that go because you're dealing with real raw pain. And you, if you don't address it, how do you, if you don't feel it, you can't heal it. And that like it, one of the things in my network marketing group in the health and wellness we not only did you know talked about health and wellness but we talked about mindset okay and so it's been a progression to get where i'm at now i had and they that kind of got me on the bunny trail of oh let it go i gotta let it go and it was hard it's so hard but you're carrying around this imagination of pain and guilt and shame and it's not your fault that this person is hurting you. And men get hurt just as much as women. And it's sad because a lot of men will not admit that they're getting abused mm -hmm. because that they're, they're supposed to be manly and, you know, and stuff like that. And, but they need healing too. It's not just a woman based, not just women getting uh, domestic violence. It's just, you're hearing more of it from the women and not hearing from the men as much. So I welcome all people to my group to for seeking guidance. I mean, even if you just you don't you don't stay in the group and you don't comment, if you get even one little inkling of something that changes your life for the better, I've done my job. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Oh, you get home, sorry. Uh, you do what you were saying? You just want to see the same. Oh, yeah. That's just all I want to do is just help one person at a time. And you know what? That's been my theme since I started, you know, uh, well, actually, since that transformation greatness has been downloaded to me, right? And that's what it's really been all about. If I can just help one person, if we can help just one person as serving leaders, as light workers, coaches, whatever you want to uh call yourself then that's what it's really all about and that's something in which that i constantly hop on to everyone right if you help out one person what happens it creates a snowball effect right one person then they pass that knowledge down to another person then to another person then to another person then to another person and then before you know it if you keep that level of consistency for about one years and you know for one year and then amazing things can happen, but it all starts with that one person. And that only not only applies in business, ladies and gentlemen, but also in life. And that's another thing in which just came to mind. That's why I love, as far as with the Small Business Network, we have something which is called uh, Demons and Angels of Some, which basically is a segment in which that we provide like a, a, a news article, right? And we have interviews with individuals that say, for instance, you know, if you came across um, individuals that was like a blessing to you in your life or use a blessing to someone else or as far as something that was that was bad in your life or something that you did wrong to others. And I just believe as far as with the, even with domestic violence, even though it's not sexy, even though obviously, you know, it can be very painful, it brings up a lot of wounds and different things of that nature. I totally get that. By the same token, we get to a point in life as adults where we have to be able to say, okay, you know what, enough is enough. Because if not, not only is it going to stifle us, but of course, if you have children, even grandchildren, what is the example in which that you're leaving for them? So do Doing the work in which that you're doing is absolutely amazing. And I commend you because you came a long ways. You know, me and you've been rocking for quite some time. We've been following each other. Like I said, we've been a part of different organizations. Me and you know basically the same people. And it's just amazing just to see the transformation. And now you are styling profile just like me because you got glasses as well. So, I mean, that's, 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 that's pretty awesome there. And so, you know, most, most certainly, you know, uh, enough um, success to you you and kudos to you i want to ask you this right because i see that no one really has any questions in the audience which i'm very surprised by the way too but it's all good um a question for you so for a person that's in that situation or know someone they're like man you know what i like i like how this conversation is going i like what um pam bam is speaking about but i just don't have no idea older i don't have a clue on how to get started how to connect with her you know i don't have any resources what can a person do as of right now to that's really start why, moving in the needle that's, that's why i do a one-on-one -on -one discovery call okay we speak and that's completely free i don't charge for that because i need to discover what it it is that they really need because i can't just i can throw the book at them but if they're not needing that I don't want to do that. I don't want to overwhelm them. And it takes a lot of courage just to even do that for some people. I know it did for me to finally reach out and just stop living and just, you know, I just kept in this, I don't know, I can't call it fairy tale, but this illusion of what I thought, you know, I can deal with this. I can handle it. I'm tough. But you don't need to power through it. You need to just admit, yep, yeah, there's a problem. Let's do a one on one. Let's see if this is for me. If it's not, then then hopefully you gain something just out of that. If it is, then I can find a direction and set up a plan and I'll make it affordable for, cause I know um, things are, times are tough right now financially for a lot of folks. So I will change my prices just to help and get them in cause they shouldn't just be left out there struggling. Mm -hmm. So if they can have the courage to, to set a, I have a calendar. I can send them a, an invite and where they can set up a one-on-one one, one -on -one with me. 15, 20 minutes, we could just um, try to figure out if this is a right program for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? You raised a good, a good point here. And I'm still surprised nobody's asking any questions. But anyhow, but uh, you said something else. 
that was powerful because what I got from what you just said is that it's not necessarily about the money, but it's more so about service. And that's something that me and Dr. James, we speak about a lot because yeah, we have, you know, products and services, just like any other entrepreneur, right? Obviously we got products and services. We got different things that we offer to the marketplace, et cetera, et cetera. Whoop de whoop de whoop. But what really <laughs> separates you from someone else is your level of service on how you can help someone, right? And even if that may be that you may have to tailor your rates in order to really bring that satisfaction level of uh, customer service, which need to be, then that's essential. So what I'm basically saying this in layman's terms, guys, is that if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a coach, right, in any kind of capacity, Really doing discovery calls, in my opinion, is like, it's paramount, right? And even doing a complimentary one, even if, just like you mentioned, even if they decide not to move forward, but at least what it does is spark something. Yeah. Because I remember when I think, to be honest with you, I think the best value I got, and this may sound kind of weird, was from the ones that was complimentary, that was free. The ones that I paid, don't get me wrong, the ones that I, I paid money and I paid handsomely, by the way, right? Um, I got value out of it too, right? I mean, shoot, I better, mm -hmm. I better put a price that I paid. But <laughs> but, but really, uh, <laughs> a lot of the value that I really did get was really from a, a free call. And it really blew my mind away too. And I was like, wow. So with that as being coaches and whatnot, community calls are very valuable plus it helps us as well as coaches be more well-rounded because we're speaking with different um, personalities and people from different backgrounds and different things of that nature so cool 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 uh miss pam bam i know you're a very busy woman and i thank you so much for being a guest here as far as on the show it really means a lot to me is there anything else we say you'd like to add for the listening audience um if you are interested at all, um, you can find me on TikTok at PamBam1111, or if you want to just do um, see what it is, because I don't go as deep on Facebook, um, try to um, hunt me down, uh, Inner Transformations, uh, just answer a few questions, and I'll let you in, and then you can see if this, what this is all about. And that's all free. I don't charge for that. I, I do charge after the discovery call once we set up a plan, but... Yeah, come come join for free and see if this is for you. And if you get something out of it, then that's my only, that's all I care that I want, that I've helped at least one person, even if they don't sign up for my service. Because I try to put some stuff out there that's relevant, and a lot of times it's something I am going through or have gone through. And if I share my experience and you gain something out of it, that is my wish. So I, yeah, Inner Transformations on Facebook and Pam Bam 1111 on TikTok. Excellent. Excellent. So with that being said, guys, this has been um, a joy and a treat. If you're watching this in attendance, um, we still have time in the month of October for the Domestic Violence Awareness Month series. So if you're in attendance and if this inspired you and you would love to be a guest as far as on the podcast, please feel free to reach out to me or to Dr. James. That is my business partner. He's basically my right-hand man. And let us know as far as your, your level of interest to be a guest here on the podcast. It doesn't cost you nothing whatsoever. If you are listening, and you're like, you know what? I have a great message, I have great content, and you would love to be on TV, radio, and also have a channel built on your behalf, then by all means, let's definitely have a discussion with that. Now, obviously, there is an investment that is required with that, but we'll be willing to work with you to see exactly on where you're at and what you're looking to accomplish. And we also got some many other great goodies installed as well, just overall, so if any of that intrigues you let's definitely have a conversation on behalf of transformation greatness and along with the small business network podcast it's been an absolute joy thank you so much to my very special guest here miss pam bam phillips I like how way that name that sounds one more time miss pam bam phillips i'm telling you guys that was amazing she is doing great things make sure that you look out for her 
Um, definitely follow her as far as on all the social media handles. Make sure too, uh, Ms. Pam Bam, that you put all that pertinent information in the comment section. Once that we're done, I will send you a copy of this podcast so you can go ahead and use it at your discretion. And with that being said, we're going to wrap this um, up, like basically do all of our others. And if what we stated on here either motivated, transformed, or inspired at least one person, at least one person, then may God be the glory and we take no credit for absolutely none of it until then you're all amazing thank you so much on this saturday afternoon by his grace and mercy look forward to seeing you all on the next one thank you everyone thank you pam bam thank you absolutely absolutely